What we see today is not how it's always been. The Oklahoma landscape before settlement was wide open prairie in most cases. Now, where soils were coarse textured, precipitation high, those would be forest. But that landscape, in fact, at settlement was open, open forest. And we might refer to that as an open woodland or savanna even. At one time in Oklahoma, cowboys drove cattle on the Shawnee Trail through these forests. And Native Americans standing on the prairies could see from horizon to horizon. Before Europeans settled here, the prairies and forests were controlled by fire. The trees tell the story. Fires burn through the prairies and forests and shrublands every few years. Fire was part of Oklahoma. Most all the native plant communities in Oklahoma are adapted to fire. Native Americans use fire to improve hunting, make traveling across the countryside easier, and even as a defense against their enemies. They manage the land with fire. Historic accounts of Oklahoma talk about Native American use of fire, and it was very important in their daily lives. When a lot of people have the misconception that it's unnatural if people burn, well, it's quite unnatural if people don't burn because lightning set very few fires. By controlling the frequency of fire and season of the burn, landowners can return to a historic Oklahoma while meeting their needs for the land. Fire is, is very beneficial whether you're only interested in wildlife or you're only interested in livestock or you're just interested in the aesthetic beauty of the land, fire gets it back to what it historically used to look like. What the state used to look like was largely determined by the type of soil, the weather, and fire. Coarse textured soils like sandy soils, that's where most of your woody plants grow. Tight soils like real clay soils, those are mostly where uh, herbaceous plants grow. And so woody plants have a hard time colonizing clay sites. The western part of the state that receives the least amount of rain is mostly shrubland composed largely of sand sagebrush and shinnery oak. In eastern Oklahoma, forests grow because there is more precipitation, and grasslands cover the central part of the state. This is how it has been for thousands of years. You can manipulate the plant community with a disturbance like fire, but only within the bounds that the climate and the soils will allow for that site. A landscape that has not seen fire for many years will have a buildup of understory brush, woody plants, and litter. Like mulch in a garden, the old growth keeps new plants from sprouting. Dead material from previous years accumulates, and that insulates the soil so that in the spring, green up is slower. Given enough time, woody plants will eventually dominate the landscape, not only in the forest, but the prairies and shrublands as well. On the large scale, without fire, and over a, a, a period of time, let's say five to 10 years, we will see a successional change to a different growth form of plant. In Oklahoma, we'll have a lot of shrubs, and if you go long enough, eastern red cedar will start to take over, particularly if you're talking seven, 10 years post-fire. In just a few years, we can actually see without fire a conversion of prairie to a red cedar woodland. Grasses require a lot of sunlight, and if you have an overstory of woody plants, grass abundance is going to decline on a site. A fire uses the litter as fuel and knocks down taller woody plants, exposing the soil to the sun. Sunlight is critical in this equation. There is more solar radiation or sunlight that meets the surface. In the short term, that means warmer soil and plants grow back very rapidly in the spring when the soil is warmer. There simply is not such a thing as a fire that's so intense that the soil is sterilized or plants are killed. They are there and they will come back. The first plants to grow are annual forbs, a good source of food for wildlife and even cattle. If a landowner is primarily interested in cattle production, then they would want to be burning fairly frequently, probably every couple of years. Cattle are attracted to the new growth because it is highly palatable. 
but grazing on recently burned areas can also help profitability. Using a fire does several things from a cattle production standpoint. Probably the most important is that you get a rapid tillering of new grass from the root and these grasses are very high in crude protein. Well, stalker cattle producers in the Flint Hills and Osage County of Oklahoma have known for years and years that annual burning is a great boon to the stalker industry. You can expect a 10 to 15 percent increase in cattle gain just from fire. What we've seen here in Stillwater is going from somewhere 4 to 6 percent crude protein all the way up to 16 to 18 percent crude protein following a fire. Just better quality, just like nutrition for any animal. Also, when you burn, you remove a lot of the old plant material. So it makes it more efficient for cattle to get at that new growth. There's not as much of the old growth that's less nutritious for them to have to dig through. Even though the tops of the grasses are burned away, the roots remain intact and that'll keep soil from eroding when you have precipitation. During the first year, the grasses will re-sprout from these roots. Most woody plants will begin growing shortly thereafter. One of the biggest benefits with fire is that it is an inexpensive way to control eastern red cedar. These plants, when they're top killed by a fire, they rapidly re-sprout. Really the notable exception to that rule is the eastern red cedar, which is a fire intolerant woody plant. If it's top killed by a fire, it has to come back from a seed source. And woody plants that do return are grazable by animals, including livestock, during the first year. When you start using prescribed fire on the landscape, you'll see that cattle diet and wildlife diet is much broader than you typically would have imagined it to be. So fire really changes what plants animals consume and it makes a lot more plants available to wildlife and cattle. As these same woody plants mature, they provide habitat for deer. Native Americans burn because they understood what we're just beginning to learn, that it attracts animals to an area, the most recently burned areas, that was able, they were able to hunt. If you're trying to manage for white-tailed deer, uh, they're browsers, so they like a lot of woody plants and vines. So about a four-year fire frequency in this part of the country is about appropriate, whereas quail, you'd want to burn a little more frequently. If left unburned, woody plants will again cover the landscape and the abundance of grasses and forbs will decline. Okay, fire frequency, you have to think of that in the context of a landscape, knowing that any given acre that burned will benefit some species and not others. So it's not, not perfect for any animal at any given time, but you, you rotate that fire across a ranch or across a landscape, and so animals shift their habitat use based on fire frequency. While frequency is the most important aspect of using fire, season of the burn is also a valuable tool. Most burns in Oklahoma are done in March during the dormant growing season. March being the windiest month in Oklahoma, it's difficult to, to find good safe conditions to burn under. So spreading out your burn season over different periods of, this, of the year can give landowners more opportunities to burn, but also can bring different benefits to, to the land and to their, their management goals and objectives. New growth after a fire is more nutritious than older grasses. Summer burns can provide low-cost food plots later in the season. There's a lot of times during late summer, the nutritional content, a lot of the grasses and stuff are, are declining rapidly. We found that you can burn in the summertime, like in July, and extend that high forage quality right into through the late summer and the fall. We can peak those nutritional quality of those plants back up to, to just like it was back in the spring when we burned in the spring months. Summer burns also have the advantage of usually being less intense and easier to control because the plants are actively growing. Even during the summer months, you know, things may look really green, but again, if you've got enough litter, you know, old growth vegetation left, you know, that area will burn. That's, you know, that stuff will burn. Just because it's green, don't think it won't burn. Landowners of forest areas have another option. They also can consider a burn after leaf fall. Right after it falls in November, December, the fuels are, aren't compacted down because of snow or rain. They're still, leaves are fluffy. They're dried out. There's a whole lot of them, and things burn a whole lot better. The most important thing to remember is to be patient with any burn. We've seen now through many years of research in Oklahoma and elsewhere as 
These uh, rangelands are, are adapted to fire, adapted to fire in any season, in any condition, and so all we have to do is wait. We cannot predict what the weather's going to do. We cannot predict how much rainfall we're going to get. And so we may get into a dry period. Well, and you burn the area, and then it becomes dry, and you're, you look at it and think, well, this area doesn't look good. That fire didn't, didn't do well. Well, come back next year. Fire allows Oklahoma landowners to work with the land, not against it. And because the land is adapted to fire, it is a sustainable way to manage the land. One of the valuable things about using prescribed fire is that you're not eliminating future options. Shinry Oak being a good example. If you eliminate it with a herbicide, it's off that site. It will not be there again in your lifetime. You can manipulate it with fire and still have that depending on if your objectives change or if you decide to sell that land and, and the purchaser wants it for different reasons. Because there's nothing that mimics fire that we can do as a management tool. Mowing does not mimic fire. Mechanically cutting cedar trees does not mimic fire. Chemicals or herbicides do not mimic fire. Fire is part of the system and nothing mimics what it does on our landscape. Fire has a positive effect on the landscape of Oklahoma.